you guys, today I've been to places, but this one, you'll like it. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Business Class. My name is Rachel Kahugo, and this is where business is more than meets the eye. Today I'm with Steve from Flint Home Integrators, and I'll just let him introduce himself first. Then uh, we'll tell you about what Flint Home Integrators do. But if you have a home and you're not a to feel homely, this is the place to be. Remember, you can talk to us through um, MBCI Media, MBCI Radio Facebook page uh, on the comment section. Then engage in this conversation. If you have questions, we'll be answering them all. Hi, Steve. Hi. Thank you for being with us today. Mm -hmm. Yes. So introduce yourself. So I'm um, Steve Ngosia, um, the founder and director at Flint Home Integrators. Mm -hmm. We're a custom home technology integration company. Mm -hmm. um, in brief, our services are, you know, we do luxury home cinemas. Mm -hmm. um, if you've ever watched MTV Cribs, mm -hmm. those kind of spaces, uh, Dolby Atmos, more than 100 inches of screen, laser mm -hmm. projector, yes. 3D ETC. Mm -hmm. uh, we do sell uh, lifestyle sound systems which are uh, you know as you can see in my background the loudspeakers we do um, bespoke interior design friendly loudspeaker systems um, these are made on order from Denmark uh, we do smart lighting which is a value addition solution both residential and commercial we also are involved in custom tech design and uh, integration for homes and uh, homes, commercial spaces, and uh, multi dwelling units. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, just for more explanation mm -hmm. for the loudspeakers, I know mm -hmm. people are used to the loudspeakers on Matatu, and you can't even hear what someone else is saying. But you mentioned the other, before we came on air mm -hmm. that for the loudspeakers, in a at a very high volume, but bad like mm -hmm. I hear you when you're speaking, you'll hear me when I want to communicate anything. Mm -hmm. So how does that work? So loudspeakers are like cars, for example. Mm -hmm. So if you have a small engine vehicle with a big body, mm -hmm. uh, then it will struggle to go up a hill, say Kinungi mm -hmm. Hill, yes. you know. Mm -hmm. So how we do is we have quality products mm -hmm that are well matched or paired uh, with the sound system that is required to drive them. So the, the refinement is basically the fidelity uh, that makes it easier to comprehend all the elements that make, a, uh, say, music or a song. Mm -hmm. So you're able to hear the drums, you're able to hear the vocals, mm -hmm. you're able to hear the layering and all that. But the appreciation of all this is equal to refinement, you know, uh, it's like, you can only appreciate good music or good art if you know what you want. Yeah. So our clients know what they want and yeah, they pay for they, it. They pay for Yeah, the they pay quality. for it, yeah. All right. Yeah, so we talk about quality. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So again, about the lightings. Mm -hmm. We're used to the normal lightings. Mm -hmm. If it's Ikienda Sana, the Zile lightings the, um, um, normal snake lights and uh -huh. the normal ones so how did you come up with the lighting that you have here and what you sell to people um i think as human beings we are affected by light in different ways yes if i told you right now to go out there and sleep in the midday midday sunlight uh -huh. i'm sun i'm sure you will not fall asleep yeah, because yeah, the human yeah but then the human body is designed to function in a certain way, depending on the kind of in lighting intensity. Right. So we, how we came about this is um, my my discipline in in regards to the industry that I operate in. It's quite broad, and part of it entails lighting design, which is basically the ability to simulate and uh, implement lighting that is uh, in line to the functions of a human body. So, for example, in the evening, if we dim the lights here right now, mm -hmm. you feel a bit cozy, you feel like, yeah. you know, falling asleep. Yeah. Which is the same thing even with, say, in the African context. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, in the African context, before the modern day era, um, 
our forefathers used to gather around the fireplace. Yeah. So as the sun sets, mm -hmm. the day slows down mm -hmm. and it ends up with a fireplace. Yeah. So with lighting mm -hmm. and entertainment, uh, we are able to simulate that instead of just having a glaring light yeah. all day. Mm -hmm. By the time you go to bed, you don't feel like sleeping. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's an extension of the daytime. Yes, yeah, so we basically, there's something called a circadian rhythm, mm -hmm. which is the rhythm that our body operates in. Uh, if you've been in the temperate countries like, you know, in the north, mm -hmm. where they have winter, summer, spring, ETC, yeah. mm -hmm. you'll, be, you'll be hard pressed to fall asleep. You know, if you watch the movies, you'll see it's four in the morning, yes. but it's daylight. Yeah. So as, as a tropical person, when you go there, you'll not be able to fall asleep because of lighting. So we're able to literally add value to our clients' homes by doing proper lighting for different spaces of the house. All right. Yeah. So did you study for all of these? Is it, did you go to school? Just visit Mbakuna Dr. YouTube, <laughs> <laughs> our main lecturer nowadays. So did you learn about this online or you have to go to school for this? Whew. I've been passionate about IT for a long time since I was a kid. I, I had a computer uh, when I was when I was around ten years old. Really? Uh, that was a personal computer, and yeah. this is in the nineties. So mm. uh, chances are I was the only person. I spent yeah. a lot of time in the library as a kid. Mm. So I'm a, I'm a certified, a bona fide geek. If there's yes. something like yes. that. Bona fide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, I. I went to school, I've been very passionate about IT, okay. but I went to school and, and I studied IT business studies mm -hmm. and beyond that I, I developed a very deep passion for, for this. I'm a big lover for music, uh, you know, for music's uh, audio file. Yeah. Then also I love my movies, my sign mm -hmm. file, yeah. I read a lot. Mm -hmm. So this is a result of 10,000 hours mm -hmm. of input. Mm -hmm. Um, I've attended a lot of conferences, mm -hmm. our suppliers hold trainings, mm -hmm. uh, endless uh, flight trips around yeah. the world to conventions, to trainings. Yeah. So yes, I've stepped in several classes, mm -hmm. but then beyond that, I've also put in a lot of initiative and this is blood, sweat and tears and yeah. passion. We have to sweat for it. Yeah, yes, blood, sweat and tears yeah. and passion. Yeah. So. So you, before you start such a company, mm -hmm. you have to really invest and have passion for it. Passion is what matters. Investment is will be useless if you're not passionate. Really? You know, Elon Musk mm. is very, very passionate about rockets. Mm. You know, Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. same. He's very passionate about the social media. Mm, sure. So when he started Instagram and Facebook, people were thinking. When he started it's Facebook. Really, yeah, what the heck, you have a page yeah. where you can share pictures, yeah. for what, and look at it now. So the same thing, you've got to be passionate and you have to be a little bit stupidly brave mm. because people see what, you, what you're doing. What you're doing. If it's unconventional, then mm. yeah, you've got to be very, very... Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, how do you market yourself just to make sure that people know you exist? Because most mm. of the people who have passion, you know what you want to do. You mm -hmm. put in the energy. Mm -hmm. You'll do everything that you want to do. But again, if you don't market yourself, people won't know that you're actually out there doing what you do. So uh -huh. how do you market yourself? <coughs> Flint, home, Flint Home Integrator's business is unique mm -hmm. in the sense that um, marketing either works or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, so we... At the beginning, when I started this, I went for a whole year without any sale. So I came up, uh, set up a showroom, you know, set up a dedicated cinema room, mm. and I could come to work every day, send my emails to all potential clients and stuff, mm. and wait, uh, and nothing happened. Yeah. Uh, but I was persistent. So the thing is, you first have to earn your mark in the in the market. Mm. Uh, you have to be recognized to be doing something unique because not many people are doing what I'm doing. Yeah. So even if I market and tell someone I'm, I'm going to build you a home cinema, mm -hmm. uh, yes, they might be interested, but the pri pricing might put them off, mm -hmm. you know? Sure. But we're custom. So um, we do a lot of 
marketing, which is you know Google uh, search optimization. Yeah. Uh, we do Instagram as well. We're big on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my valuable staff is not here, but she's very very involved in pushing that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, we we work on relationships and networks yeah. with industry players mm -hmm. and uh, we are high value product so yeah. referrals and our work speaks for itself yeah yeah beyond that we have this experience center yeah. where we are able to score the sales uh, from experience mm -hmm. from customers experience yeah. yeah so we'll be talking about the experience center but before that you've mentioned about being unique Mm -hmm. So you'd be unique, you'd uh, make your business equal a unique business, mm -hmm. but because people have to get their value, mm -hmm. the price would be a little bit higher than mm -hmm. every other place we're doing the normal things, right? But that's uh, that's <laughs> yes, because it's gone. unique. Um, the uniqueness the uniqueness doesn't justify uh, pricing. Right. Uh, uniqueness is basically. You know, when you're doing something that is of high quality, mm -hmm. you're setting the bar high. Uh -huh. uh, so the, the cost of entry mm -hmm. is not as easy as, say for example, in Kenya, if you say that you're doing, say you're selling monkey tails mm -hmm. and you, you're a billionaire, mm -hmm. all the monkeys will go missing from yeah. the forest because mm -hmm. people will be like, ha, this is where he makes his money. Mm -hmm. They'll go and hand them down. Yeah. So we're unique in a sense that we are broad, mm. but our pricing is value. Mm. It's premium pricing, mm. basically. Mm. So if you if you know what a Rolex mm. is, mm. a true Rolex is like two million shillings, yes. but it's value for money. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Wow. Mm. All right. So we'll be going for a short break to get the business one one. So if you want to uh, venture into this business or scale up, if you're in this business, this is where the secret is. So we'll be getting into the business on one. As we come back, I'll be telling you about the experience center. So don't go away. You'll be having a good, good time. But in the meantime, bye bye. Um, if you would like to start such a business, you've got to be passionate. You've got to know what you want to do and you have to invest a lot of your time in research. If you're already in the business uh, you, and, you, and you want to scale up, I would advise that you, you know, uh, benchmark with the best in the industry or globally and keep on refining on your, on your practice in terms of the quality of work, the quality of products that you're giving to your clients. And uh, the best you can ever do is stick to what you want to do rather than coping on what's a trend because trends never last. So if you want your business to stay unique, you've got to always perfect on what makes you be unique uh, because at the end of the day, no one has, no one reinvents the wheel. Uh, if the wheel is already there, then you cannot reinvent it. You just have to make it better and better, and that's what makes you unique. Hi, my name is Steven Gossier, CEO of Flint Home Integrators, and you're watching Business Plus. So we are back. Guys, this place is so comfortable. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we are back, and we said that we'll be talking about the Experience Center. But I know that now you've gotten the idea of what you need if you want to start such a place or you're already in and you want to be bigger and just scale up. Also, if you want to have such an experience at your home, guys, I repeat, this is the place to be. So we were talking about the experience center and mm -hmm. the experience I've had there. I'm telling you I've been to places, but that was different. So you literally feel the sound. It's like you're acting the movie, or <laughs> you're, you're really in the movie. Yes. Yeah, so how, how? Yeah, it's so massive, and you're literally in. in. Mm -hmm. Is it because it's not such a big space, or is it because of the um, the sound system that you have? How do you how do you go about it? Um, 
first of all, um, thank you for for the compliments of you yeah. know, having had a good experience. Yeah. So the thing is, there's a whole sense that goes into the cinema room design, right? Uh, in order to get the immersive experience that you had. Mm -hmm. One is that a cinema room has to be in a space. It has to have the right equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, but all that has to start from design. Mm -hmm. So in order to effect or, as they say, pull it off, mm -hmm. we work from the design point where we, we spec the right equipment. Mm -hmm. For example, the number of height ceiling speakers, those are the Dolby Atmos speakers, mm -hmm. uh, the number of uh, subwoofers mm -hmm. for the low frequency feel, you know, like when a plane takes off, you can feel like it's, yeah. you know, it's right in front of you. Yes. So there is a lot that goes into this as a, as a setup, mm -hmm. uh, which if I was to talk, it would be another. Uh, a whole episode. Yeah, master's <laughs> case study. Uh, uh, okay. yeah. All right. And you've mentioned uh, the Dolby atmosphere. Tell mm -hmm. us about it. So Dolby Atmos is one, just one of the few, uh, I'll say, protocols of uh, object-based sound processing, mm -hmm. um, which in this case, uh, for example, if you're in a, in a theatre, mm -hmm. when the rain starts falling, you can hear like the raindrops yes. are, you know, mm -hmm. falling Literally, from above, yes. yeah, just above you. Mm -hmm. if an el or if a chopper, a helicopter takes off, a bullet is shot yeah. so they how it's how the movie is processed and mastered mm -hmm. uh, to, because we as human beings we hear in 360 degrees mm, yeah. um, so if a cricket was you know here mm -hmm. you'll hear that the cricket is here yeah. so that's basically the old atmos is how mm. the post-production of the content is done uh, to sound like that I think for you for your case, you're doing uh, stereo, mm. left, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. processing. Mm. Yeah, so it's an advanced movie processing okay. for realismness. All right. Yeah. And uh, about the quality equipment mm. and the right e equipment, as you put it, mm -hmm. where do you source them from? Are the speakers, the screens, where mm. do you source them from? Because I get it, for you to have such mm. a quality experience, you need mm. quality equipment as well. Yes, so we belong to an alliance of custom technology integration companies around the world. Yeah. And uh, our industry is pro-consumer, is not mm. consumer. Mm -hmm. So we have direct links to suppliers. Mm -hmm. For example, our acoustic loudspeakers are sourced directly from Denmark, mm -hmm. uh, which is they're made on order. Mm -hmm. Our projection screens are sourced directly from the manufacturers in the US, mm. uh, as everyone says nowadays, Oko yeah. US. Oko US, yes. Komaju. <laughs> yeah, Maju. So, uh, we, as it is, uh, my, you know, um, my short answer is we source directly from, we are authorized resellers yeah. and authorized custom installers because mm -hmm. this is a premium product yeah. and you don't want to go to third party mm. and then sell it to a client yeah. uh, and then warranties after sell mm. support etc mm. uh, same with Luton yeah. we get directly from the manufacturers ah, yes nice. yeah. and uh, why is it important for one to have your own home theater or uh, the cinema the cinema hall and everything mm -hmm. rather than just and then you watch you go and get mm -hmm. the experience then I come back home why is it better if I have my own at home um, we, for example, with the recent case of COVID-19, right. uh, we found ourselves spending more and more time at home. Mm. And um, that meant that you needed entertainment mm. uh, in the house. Home, yes. And as a man, for example, mm. I, I used to see my peers stuck in the parking lots, mm. scrolling through their phones. Uh, because they couldn't go into the house and mm. hang out in the living room yeah. with a domestic manager. Mm. So, um, it's a cinema room is a space that you would consider as a family space. Mm -hmm. You can hang out with your kids, yeah. you can hang out with your wife, mm. uh, you can go to church mm -hmm. because it's, beyond, it's more than movies. You can yeah. have your YouTube there. Mm. All the churches move to YouTube yeah. nowadays. Mm. Uh, you can have your friends over and watch Arsenal, you know, getting mm. whooped. Yeah. 
uh, yeah, so there's more value to a cinema room uh, for both clients, uh, homeowners, as well as developers because it's a pricing uh, justifier, a value addition, and a product differentiator. All right. Yeah. So take me through what it take me. It will mm. take me to have a complete um, cinema room in my home. So in order for you to have a cinema room in your home, mm -hmm. there are two elements of this kind of entertainment. One, you can choose to have a big screen TV, mm -hmm. which uh, the biggest are right now are OLED is 85 inches, yeah. 87 inches. Mm -hmm. And uh, with LED screens, they've gotten to around 100 inches. Mm -hmm. uh, but the most important thing is to work with a custom integrator. Uh, who, in this case it could be Flint Home Integrators yeah. or other players out there yeah. um, and you have to know what you want mm -hmm. so if you like your bass you know you've got like that blood curdling mm -hmm. bass uh, you've got to specify that if you like your movies you've got to specify that mm -hmm. and better yet you know come to us have an experience so that you can make an informed decision mm -hmm. yeah all right so what are some of the challenges that you faced while starting this? Because I know it's a big investment that you mm -hmm. put in here. Uh -huh. And uh, having clients who mm -hmm. would want to have this in their homes, lazima wakwe wanajua that this one won't go wrong. They have to be very sure that you do a good work for them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So what are some of the challenges that you've had while you started? Um, in terms of my personality, yeah. there's no challenge. Uh -huh. But, <laughs> <laughs> all right. But uh -huh. um, definitely, just like everyone else, we I assume that ninety percent of us have graduated from an institution. Uh -huh. And when you're looking for a job, you're told, uh, okay, when you're looking for work, you come across adverts that say ten years, two years work yes. experience, etc. Yeah. So the biggest challenge was always, show me where you've done uh -huh. this. Who have you done this uh -huh. for? Uh, you know, it's it's a good idea. I really like it, but uh, I don't want to be a guinea pig for your son's Congress yeah. ideas. Mm. Even though it works in your showroom, show me uh, if it works. So I went for a whole one year without any sale. Uh, I depleted all my savings, moved back to my parents, mm. and uh, yeah, somewhere along the way, the sun did shine. Yeah. yeah. So that's how you came up with the with the um, experience center. Yes, yes. The mm. experience center is because our products are experiential. Mm. The home cinema is experiential. True. Yeah. So you cannot just like DT Dolby and all these mm. auto dealerships. Mm. If they introduce a new vehicle, yeah. you have to go for a test drive mm. before you buy. So an experience center is ourselves mm. to okay. to our clients and also. Uh, a learning point to our partners is, for example, salespeople, uh, interior designers, architects, wow. and uh, also consultants. Mm. Yeah. And it actually works, guys. Baby, I'm almost this close to having it in my home because this is a good experience. Mm. So, as we finish, what mm. do you want to tell the people who are listening and mm. watching us? And they want to venture into such a business, or mm. they want one of these in their homes? or people who are already in this um, field and mm -hmm. they want to scale up? Uh, I'll start with my potential clients. Mm -hmm. um, so if, for example, someone is having a dream, if you are putting up a dream home that you think you would like to tip, tick all the boxes, mm -hmm. so you have your swimming pool, you have your basement, you have your so-called man cave uh, space, um, the best way to start about it is by coming over to Flint Home Integrators mm -hmm. at the Village Market and we will give you free consultancy and guide you through the process. Okay. Uh, for those who are in the industry and are looking to scale up, mm -hmm. um, I think the most important thing is uh, you know, sticking to your brands, uh, sticking to your best practices, mm -hmm. never compromising on quality mm -hmm. or cutting corners because that's the most important thing. Okay, thank you for having us today. So I think we'll just make ourselves comfortable now. This has been the business class. My name is Rachel Kahugo. I am sure that you've enjoyed the episode. And if you have any questions, remember I've told you that you can reach us on NBCI TV Facebook page on the comment section and we will be answering all 
your questions remember we'll be having a repeat of the same on uh, friday this week at 7 30 pm till then see you